So, I noticed you're wearing a t-shirt. Sorry girls, I'm gay. <laughs> Are you gay? Yes, I am. <laughs> Were you born that way? Um, I don't really know. <laughs> so you're not sure? Well, when I was a little kid, I, I wasn't really worried about sexuality. It's kind of the same sense as a toddler doesn't find girls attractive until they hit about puberty. So, so. You, you chose when you were hitting puberty to go for guys rather than girls? No, it was less of a choice and more of a kind of urge. Because the thing is, when you get to a certain age, the same way it works for straight children, it works for gay children. So when straight children get that urge, they get like, oh, okay, I'm attracted to this, like, that's an attractive person. It's kind of the same concept for a gay person because they just know, like, who they're attracted to once they hit puberty because that's when their sexual interest activates, kind of. So it's not a choice. You were born with these tendencies? I suppose so. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's really, maybe it's developed up until puberty and that's why kids don't really experience sexual interest in people until that time, but... Do you think people are born adulterers? Adulterers. Um, you know, they, they've got an urge within them to commit adultery and they've had it all their lives. Right from when they were young, they looked at women and didn't care if they were married or not. If they had the chance, they would commit adultery. Do you think people are born like that? I suppose it's kind of broad. I don't know. Like, they could be. So, it's, an, it's a choice, isn't it? When someone commits adultery, that's a choice. They've got an urge and they follow that urge. Well. If you look at it like that, then that's also hypothetical in the same sense that homosexuality is hypothetical because at the end of it, an adulterer might have been attracted, that might be their interest. So just like how people are into bondage and things like that, and just how people are into different types of females, different types of males, it's kind of just, that's what arouses them. Frankly. Are people born fornicators? Possibly. I was. Oh, I was. Okay. Right from when I was a kid I had an urge to be with women. I found them attractive. And it was just a natural urge they followed. Now, Richard, are you a spiritual person? Um, kind of. Do you believe in God's existence? Yes. What does God think of homosexuality? It's all just, in the Bible, it's looked down upon. Um, by the church, by the Pope, it's getting more gradually accepted and people are starting to look at it in different senses. So what does God think of homosexuality? It's still unknown. So you don't know what the Bible says? I know what the Bible says. Tell me, I'd like to know what you think. Well, there's Leviticus that man should not lie with an, another man, frankly. So what happens to them if they do? Um, I'm not sure. Well, it says they'll be put to death, as with adulterers and uh, those that kidnapped. And So what do you think of that? I think it's kind of unequal punishment for something that's kind of... I don't know. It just seems weird. What do you think of the New Testament verse that says, Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor revilers, nor extortionists will inherit the kingdom of God. What do you think of that verse? Honestly, I feel as if being a homosexual myself, um, I don't feel as if all of the good things that I've done would just go null and void just because I am gay. Yes, people steal, lie, cheat, do all different kinds of things, but at the end of the day, the, a good person's a good person. So and what God, you're saying to me, that even though you're guilty of homosexuality, you do good, and that's going to wash away your sins? It's not meant to wash away my sins. Yes, being gay may be viewed as a sin, even though it's not explicitly like stated. It is, and I've kind of accepted that, but I'm going to live my life well, I'm going to do good by people and do good by my community. And So you're a good person? I would hope so. Well, let's give a little test, Richard. How many lies have you told in your whole life? Um, quite a few. You ever stolen something? Yes. So you're a lying thief? I suppose. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. So Richard, I'm not judging you, but you've told me you're a lying thief and a blasphemer, which is very serious in God's eyes. That's three of the Ten Commandments. So if God judges you by the commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Guilty of those. Would you go to heaven or hell? That's hypothetical. Well, the Bible says all liars live their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer will inherit God's kingdom. So you're in big trouble on Judgment Day. Not even looking at your homosexuality, you've violated those other commandments. So how can you justify yourself? How can you be made right with God? Have you any idea? Well, if you think about that, everybody, majority of the people that I've seen you interview, because I've actually watched a like I've watched two people now and out of those people 
if it's true that everyone has is a liar and a thief and that everybody's done some form of breaking the commandments, then I feel like, how would anybody make it to heaven and therefore maybe everyone's going to hell? That's actually a very good point. It's exactly what the Bible says, but this is what it says. God is rich in mercy, and even though his wrath abides upon us, he provided a way for us to be forgiven. God became a human being, Jesus of Nazareth, and took the punishment for the sin of the world on that cross. You and I violated God's law, the Ten Commandments, and Jesus paid our fine. If you're in court and someone pays your fine, the judge can say, this person's guilty, but he's out of here because the fine's paid. Richard, God can let you live forever because of what Jesus did on the cross and paying the fine for the sin of the world and rising from the dead. But what you've got to do is turn from sin. It's called repentance. No more lying, stealing, blasphemy, adultery, fornication, homosexuality. You've got to turn from everything that's abhorrent to God and trust alone in Jesus. If you do that, God will grant you the gift of everlasting life. So you've got a choice today. As with an adulterer and a fornicator, either he continues in sin and ends up in hell or repents, trusts in Jesus and finds everlasting life. Does that make sense? In the same sense, wouldn't repenting on my deathbed be the same as stopping today? Yeah. How old are you? I am 18. Give me a ballpark estimate of how many people are going to die in the next 12 months. Any idea? Um, somewhere in the 50 millions. 54 million. You could be one of them. You may not get a deathbed repentance. A lot of people don't. They die in car accidents. It's all over for them real quick. And I don't want you to die in your sins. You seem like a nice guy and I'd hate you to go to hell. So think about this. You could have an aneurysm in your sleep tonight, have a car accident. Most people think death is something that happens to other people, but it could happen to you. So please think about this, Richard. What do you think about it at least? Um, honestly, I feel as if it's not really a choice at this point. You mean homosexuality? Yes. Okay, well, it doesn't matter what you think, it's a choice or not. You've got to repent of it, okay, and trust alone in Christ. And you know what will happen? God will give you a new heart with new desires. My sins are no different than yours. I mean, I was full of all sorts of unclean sexual desires before I was a Christian. I used to lust after a woman, and the Bible says you do that, you commit adultery in your heart. So I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm saying as a Christian, I'm better off. I'm like a mammoth in a parachute, and you're not. And I'm just trying to tell you, please get right with God, because you don't know when you're going to die. Does that make sense? Well, I feel... If does God that make sense? It does. But I feel that if God made us all, then, yeah, he would make us with flaws, but he would make us with good things. So. Well, that's, that's a real good, real good thought. Two, two answers to that. Firstly, God made us perfect in the beginning. We were good in the book of Genesis. Then came sin, and then came suffering and death. And the other thing, you, you said that you do good, and it washes away your sins. Try that in a court of law. Judge, I robbed that bank, but I do a lot of good. The judge is not going to take your good works into an account. It's, he'll just judge you on the crime, and it's the same with God. Doing good is not washing away sin in a court of law. It won't wash away crimes, and it won't work on Judgment Day. So I'm pleading with you, Richard, please think about this. Crank open that Bible and get right with God, and then you'll have assurance of everlasting life. Until that day, God's wrath abides upon you for your sins. Will you please think about this? Um, honestly, I have, and I've kind of accepted who I am. And I'm not going to try to be someone I'm not. Well, you've just fulfilled Romans chapter 1. You know what it says? It says, if you give yourself over to the sin of homosexuality, God will give you over to a reprobate mind. Do you know what that means? It's a mind that's given to uncleanness, and you can't come back from it because you're so given to it. So I'm pleading with you. Think about this while you've still got a, still got a will, and still, still, at least you're listening to me. So please think about it. Read Romans chapter 1. This is deadly serious because you don't know when you're going to die. And I want you to be, I want to see you in heaven on, uh, uh, on that day. Okay? If the Pope is accepting of homosexuality, then I feel that even though you may be one man, if the Pope is willing to accept who I am as a person, then I doubt that anyone's opinion under him would really matter at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. What matters is what God says. And God says homosexuals and adulterers and fornicators will not inherit the kingdom well, of God. Is a pope not a messenger? No, pope? definitely not. De he's an ordinary man who's exalted to a position in the Catholic Church. And if he usurps the authority of God, then there's something wrong. He should agree with everything God's word says and what Jesus said. And you need to repent and trust in him or you're going to end up in hell. And I don't want that to happen to you. So don't have faith in man have trust in God alone. Okay? Was not the Bible written by man? Of course. 
God inspired men to write it. I've been reading it every day for 42 years without fail. There's no mistakes in it. It's axiomatic, self-evident. All you got to do is search the scriptures and you'll see the words of Jesus parallel history before it came into being. No one ever spoke like him. He's God manifest in the flesh. So don't you believe what people say, believe what God says. And he says you must repent or you'll perish. Your eternal salvation is the most important thing ever. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Your life is precious to you. One more thing before we close, Richard. Would you sell an eye for a million dollars? A knife? An eye for a million dollars. No. Okay, what about both for a hundred million? No. Your eyes are precious to you? Yes. They're without price. How much more is your soul, that very life that looks out these little windows called your eyes? I would Watch never it. sell it. Well, you are. You're giving it up for your homosexuality and your sins. You're going to lose your very life. And God says, if you repent, you can save your life. And that's what I'm pleading with you to do. And think about my motives. I don't want your money. I'm not saying join a church. I'm saying, Richard, think about where you're going to spend eternity. Think about it. And I'm challenging you to do that today. So, Richard, thank you very much for talking to me. I've really appreciated listening. Yeah. Um, thank you, too. <laughs> How come the word homosexuality hasn't been in the Bible until a few decades ago. And if homosexuality is such an abomination, then why is the word abomination used to describe it? I noticed when I came up, you two were kissing in public. You are obviously gay. So what does God think of homosexuality? That's a stupid question. I think you should just stay out of it. I have a lot of gay friends that go to church every Sunday. They believe in God and they're gay. I'm not gonna sit here and listen to this. I really didn't mean to offend you guys. Oh, I know, I know. You, you and every other homophobe never mean to offend, yet you still tell us that we're going to hell unless we change. And I just, I just heard it all before and I'm done listening.